Hi, Patrick with Shazibo. In this video, we're going to recreate one of our most popular videos, which was explaining shade cell corners. And the reason shade cell corners are so important, it's the key to everything. It's the key to the shade cell looking good and lasting a long time. And we're going to go through the differences from ready-made to other contractor grade shade sales and explain why they're different. And then our first video was about 12 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago. And we do have a few improvements since then and we'll go over those too. So if you want to dig into the differences in shade cell corners, here we go. So here's our corner. And uh, this has the new hardware on it. So I'm, I'm foreshadowing what's coming up, but um, this hardware is a little bit different, but really it's the, it's the smoothness and the attention to detail of our corner that makes the difference. So when a shade sail is up in the air, you don't want any points of friction. You don't want any overstressed points. You want everything to flow. Uh, and all we've done for the last 13 years is work on making this corner flow better. So let's start by comparing it to the, to the bottom of the ladder, which are ready-made shade sails. And we do have some of the sales from that first video, if you remember. And they've made some improvements too, which I just noticed this morning. So a ready-made shade sale, like we said, is a beautiful thing. It's just not right for every circumstance. It's, it's uh, inexpensive, uh, it's not very strong, but it does work great in the right circumstance, like I said. What was interesting as I was putting the corners that we have in our, our collection together was this one that is an exposed webbing sail with a tiny little D-ring, but, but look at this turnbuckle that they were hooking it up with. So I'm the type of guy that uh, it has to make sense. If it looks good, if it looks like it goes fast, like an airplane, if an airplane looks like it flies, it probably flies. This doesn't look right. So as you're evaluating your shade sail you might wanna buy or put up at your house or your business, uh, just take a look at it and say, mm, does, that, does that look right? That does not look right. So now I'm gonna give some more props to the ready-made shade sail industry. So as I pulled out a corner, which they throw rope in to attach it with, which is fine for temporary, but it gives you an idea of the level of this versus a, a contractor grade Shazibo. So take a look at this and see if you can tell the improvement that they've made over time. And you're, if you're looking at this part of it, you're right. So they've covered up the webbing with shade cloth. Shade cloth is the best at uh, reducing or, or resisting the UV rays of the sun. That's what makes them last so long. The webbing is not. This is just either nylon or, or polypro webbing and the sun eats that up. Well, they got smarter and they covered that up in this one that we bought maybe a year ago. So they are where the whole industry is making improvements, so, so good for the consumer. But if you compare this to our corner, there's just really no, there's just no comparison. Uh, the weight of it, the technique, and of course ours is all, the webbing is covered. So that's Shazibo versus ready-made. Let's move on to Shazibo versus other commercial contracting companies and how they make their corners. So it's occurring to me as I'm making this video that I could compare myself to 10, 12 years ago and just, it's like an aging video. Okay, there's a younger Pat, here's older Pat. I, I wonder what that, that's gonna look like when I compare these two, but let's move on to other corners that people that know how to sew, they have a sewing shop, I'm sure. Uh, they, they care about what they do. They just don't quite have the formula right. So I used this in the last example kind of a bull in the china shop. Lots of stitching, lots of bulkiness to it, and they're using the round ring. And I went over in the last video, so this one is actually starting to cut through a little bit. So a round ring, when it's tight, when it pulls tight, it pulls more on the edges and less than almost nothing in the middle because the ring is round. So what this will do is over time, that will scissor through these edges and this will eventually come all the way out, which of course is a bad thing. So back to the bull in the china shop, here's the inside of this corner. 
And the, the way we get these corners is we'll go out and replace a shade sail or somebody will send one in for repair that's not repairable. So we'll make a new one for them. And we'll just cut the corners off because you know, we are students of the shade sail industry and we want to be the best we can be. And then we don't mind cutting them apart to see how the other company made them. So that's how we got all these samples. And uh, you know, seatbelt webbing, good stuff. Lots of stitching, good stuff. It's just bulky. So I'm gonna make a comparison I might get uh, in trouble for, but uh, this is like a Ferrari. Ferrari's lines, Ferrari does not have jagged lines, right? They're smooth. Ferraris, your eye just wants to look at a Ferrari, right? Mustang, uh, I don't know, you know, they're a little, this is a Mustang. This is a, you know, high school kid with a mullet uh, tearing around town on a, on a Friday night, right? This is the Ferrari that's sitting by the racetrack, just smooth, just sitting there and smooth. So these will probably last a similar lifetime as ours. It's just not gonna look as good. This next one also uses a round ring and they, they minimize it a little bit by putting this thinner webbing here. And you can see it goes on both sides. And the uh, cable attaches directly to the ring. So at some point, they're gonna have to tighten this. But at these corners, they're, they're locked off. One thing that uh, is interesting about this one, so this rope, this is a very common style in Australia. So they'll go back and forth with a rope maybe well, about four times on this one, back and forth, and they'll cinch it up, and that's what provides the tension for the shade sail, and then they'll just wrap the rope around, tie it off, and that's their attachment. So they have to go back, you know, maybe every four or five years, because this rope's not gonna last. Uh, it's very handy, it's very easy, very cheap. Uh, they do it all the time in Australia. It's just, it's just not a long-term thing. And you, you probably wouldn't want to do this on a school or somewhere uh, we have customers that put sails up at zoos over the elephants, the rhino. You know, you don't want to have to go out there every three or four years and replace this rope. So again, made by a company that, that knows what they're doing, they're just not quite as refined as our Ferrari. And the last one in this example is another bull in the china shop, big reinforcements, they did use a D-ring where it's flat on the bottom, and they did cover up their webbing. So not a bad corner, just not, just not as smooth as, as the one you'd get from us. Okay, now let's talk about plates. And that, I don't know what else to call them, but when people try and figure out, okay, what's the best way to put a shade cell together, they often go towards a piece of metal at the corner, and, and this was in our last video too. Uh, this one has a nice looking plate, or used to be, maybe when it was new, uh, cut out nicely. This was not uh, done by an amateur, but the thing that, that doesn't make sense to me, you have this plate, you know, metal is stronger than fabric, but it's bolted here with a real thin piece of material, these tiny cables, and it just, I mean, really, do you, do you want this? This looks like a tractor. This looks like a Ferrari. This looks smooth, clean lines. This is like, ah, I mean, I, I get what they were going for, but, but, but not quite. Here's another one that's pretty common in the industry. They sell these, these discs, and they're, they're two halves with a little uh, spacer in there for the cable to go through. And again, just bulky, big, uh, you know, you got these threads hanging out. It looks like, you know, is this from, from my uh, lawnmower? You know, it just doesn't, it's not fun. The other thing that you, hopefully you can see on the camera, they didn't hem their edges. These are just cut. And the good news with shade cloth is it's knitted, so it won't continue to unravel. The shade cloth itself won't. Uh, it just doesn't look finished, right? And, and you may never see that. If they put this up at your restaurant, you know, you may look at it from 40 feet away, you'd never see it, but you know, it's just the little details that, that people don't get right or they don't put enough attention into it to, to evolve into something better. This plate, uh, this is about the biggest one that I've run across. Uh, we replaced these sails with our style and it's just, uh, 
I mean, it was like a semi truck, right? If, if there's a Ferrari that you just can't take your eyes off of, there's like a semi truck that's, you know, blaring down the freeway. Rah! Really? How, how, does, how do you need this thick of a piece of material when it's gonna support fabric? Like it's, it, so anyway, I, obviously I'm not a fan of, of the big pieces of metal, but the components are all the same. Uh, something that hooks to your attachment point, something that grabs the cable, and something that grabs the fabric. So you can do this, or you can do this, and it does all the same thing. Grabs the fabric, place for the cable, place to attach to, just smooth. And I think the last example, this one, I'm not sure what it's supposed to go to, but they have these holes drilled, and I think it was to go to some sort of plate. So that's what, these two don't go together, but a similar thing would happen where, you know, they would bolt this down, and then this would be supported at your corner. So imagine if this thing fell down, the, the damage it would do in a storm. So that's, uh, obviously I'm biased, you know, I've, I've put, you know, to over 20 years of my life into the development of this corner. Uh, and there are a few things that we've uh, gotten better at over the years, I'm gonna show you those next. So the first thing from 10, 12 years ago, when we made the first video, we didn't have these called D-ring thimbles. And what they are is, it's a D-ring with the thimble pressed into it. And the thimble is a similar concept to like a crane or a tow truck where you want the cable to go around a gradual curve, not a sharp curve. And this floats inside the hardware. So when you're attaching this, it lets the cable equalize with the fabric because this can turn. And of course, when it's under tension, it's, it's harder to turn, but it still does turn and lets that shade sail settle into a, a very nice uh, equilibrium of tension between the cable and the fabric, and it just works really well. So we have actually four sizes of this, depending on the size of your sail. So the smaller ones would get the, uh, the 3 16 D-ring thimble, and then it goes up from there all the way to a half inch. So this would be for a really big shade sail. And I, I have every confidence this can replace this because of the, the finesse and the, the smoothness of it and the way it all works together. So that's, that's been a big improvement. The other improvement is our turnbuckle that locks. So what often happens if you don't tighten the lock nuts of your turnbuckle and you don't get it all perfect or maybe what happens more often is uh, someone will take a shade sail down and they don't know how this works. They'll put it back up loose. Well, this turnbuckle, <clears throat> a regular turnbuckle might vibrate loose. This end spins, spins, spins. Pretty soon it falls apart and the shade sail comes down. So how do you make that foolproof? Well, if you look, we've got these cotter pins that keep the turnbuckle ends from turning. So once you adjust it, you put the cotter pins back in and then it can't come apart from the ends. <clears throat> Additionally, we have a nut and bolt in the end with a keeper, so there's no way that's gonna come apart. So this is our set it and forget it, uh, foolproof turnbuckle that we have made for us for the specific reason of regular turnbuckles tend to fall apart. <laughs> Uh, that's just the bottom line. Well, that's it. Hopefully, uh, if you're thinking about investing in a shade sale and you want to know, okay, what, why is it so expensive? What, what things should I look for? Do I, do I go with this company versus this company? Look at the details. Watch this video back. Check out all the different ways people make things. And if it makes sense to you, as you're looking at it, it's probably a good product. If something looks a little off, keep looking and go to shazebo.com. Uh, we have a dealer network now across the country. And like I said, 20 years of my life into developing this corner uh, will do a, a great job for you. Thanks.